Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Xiaoyu Yao, and I'm a software engineer uh, in Oracle Cloud. And today, um, I'm going to uh, talk with my uh, colleague, um, uh, Brad. He's uh, working in Cloudera, and uh, we're both working on the Apache Ozone project before. And uh, we are also um, Hadoop committers, PMC for Redis uh, as well. So uh, can you turn to the next page? Yeah. So first, uh, let's look at the agenda of today's talk. Uh, I will cover the first half about Ozone Ozone architecture and uh, the Ozone uh, protocols and how we uh, secure the uh, the Ozone protocols uh, with uh, with security mechanisms uh, such as uh, Kerberos dele delegation tokens. And then Brad is going to cover the S3 security and uh, how the Ozone HA uh, is secured with uh, the similar mechanism, but with uh, some uh, some uh, different uh, implementations. And then at the end, we'll give some demos for uh, how to secure ozone clusters. Next, please. So uh, let's take a look at what is uh, Apache Ozone and why do we need it? So Ozone is a distributed key value store at, um, aiming to solve some of the scalability issues uh, facing HDFS. And uh, HDFS has uh, been working very well uh, to uh, up to some scales, such as uh, hundreds of millions of files, uh, but mostly targeted for large, uh, big data, not for uh, a small file with, uh, with large uh, quantities. And that is the best case for the object store. So um, Ozone Project was proposed to uh, introduce such an object store for Apache Hadoop so that HDFS can um, can work for the best case for like large files. Well, Ozone can be uh, uh, working very well for those kind of small file issues uh, that challenge the stabilities of HDFS clusters. So how does Ozone solve these uh, scalability issues? The first, uh, uh, the first part uh, is to separate the namespace. As we all know, uh, HDFS name node uh, has uh, large heap requirements. And this is because the name node maintains both the namespace metadata, but also the corresponding blocks uh, for each of the files. And uh, separating this uh, namespace is a very key step so that we can scale the, uh, the, the naming services and the blocking service independently. And uh, also uh, different from some other object store system, and Ozone provide strong consistencies and so that we can easily implement a lot of uh, Hadoop compatible file system semantics without worrying about like a listing consistency or renaming consistencies like other object store. And Ozone also, we have testing Ozone scale with billions of objects uh, in a single cluster. And this kind of scale has never achieved with any HDFS cluster so far. And we have uh, tested with Yarn, MapReduce, uh, and all the other Hadoop ecosystem, and uh, both uh, work with Ozone as of today. Next page, please. Yeah, so we, we briefly talk about the uh, architectures. And I think uh, previous sessions, uh, uh, Dinesh, Lokesh, and uh, 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 they already um, uh, go over those architecture uh, pieces for Ozone. I will just uh, briefly talk about uh, like uh, security related pieces. So um, so at the bottom layer, we can see like Ozone is basically uh, a bunch of data nodes and uh, the data node each contains uh, 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 like, a, like a thousand of containers. And those containers are basic unit of replications. Uh, this is different from HDFS where you replicate blocks set up a data pipeline. Here the pipeline was built uh, for the container replications. And all the container could be size of 5 GB uh, uh, or larger. And this way we can, we can guarantee the replication can be efficiently use the network bandwidth and also some of the computation resources on the data nodes. And the underlying consistency is guaranteed by the Apache Redis project. And the Redis is the open source uh, raft uh, implementation libraries. And we leverage uh, heavily for uh, all the Ozone-related HA services. And we'll talk about that later. And, uh, and uh, the coordinator for this uh, container replication 
uh, we have a service uh, which take care of this container replication called Story Container Manager. And, uh, and with this container layer replication available, and then we build a separate, uh, relatively lighter namespace layer called Ozone Manager, which manages the namespace uh, structures uh, uh, to provide uh, object store semantics. And on top of this, and we provide a Java uh, bindings for the uh, Ozone Manager client. And uh, so the Ozone client can talk to Ozone Manager to get the namespace information and then get the corresponding block location information and container information to access state node directly. And uh, with Ozone client, the RPC client, and uh, we also support uh, the Hadoop compatible file system. And, uh, and uh, also uh, we support S3 uh, semantics, so you can access uh, Ozone where REST APIs and without uh, needing to deploy like the, 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 the big jars uh, for Ozone. And uh, Ozone have uh, a dedicated manager UI and that is different from the traditional Hadoop, like the Hadoop uh, web, web portals. And uh, it has richer uh, functionalities uh, to uh, to manage Ozone from like a global um, uh, views. You can see like all the containers, uh, pipelines, and uh, some of the, the file system distribution information, and some of the usage information. And also we plan to enhance it in the futures and for more functionalities. Next page, please. And this, uh, now we're talking about some of the uh, security related pieces. And uh, once we uh, get, Similar with the components, and we we talk about the metadata separations. So from this uh, diagram, we can see the metadata has three layers. On the left column, you can see there's a namespace layer metadata that was maintained by Ozone Manager, and then uh, underlying that we have the storage container manager, which maintains the container metadata, like where this container is located and which data has it. And uh, for each of the data nodes, and it maintains the block layer metadata and its corresponding blocks. So the replication, uh, so all those uh, metadata are safely replicated via Raft, the same Raft library to achieve the high availability. And uh, so in case one of the node, like auto manager node fails and the, the two other nodes can still have the quorum to support um, support uh, the, uh, the client request. And same thing, for the story container manager and the data node. So this is how we achieve the HA. And uh, so Brad will cover like how the HA security is supported. But underlying this and the, the protocol, uh, you can see the horizontally um, that we have um, uh, we have the Hadoop RPC across the board from gateway to auto manager to SCM and the data nodes. And, uh, and uh, vertically, and uh, you can see like uh, we, when we do the replications, the replication is based on the gRPC protocol and uh, pretty much like uh, uh, the, what the Raft uh, library is using is purely based on the gRPC. And they, I think uh, location mentioned like there are a lot of improvement in gRPC and to efficiently achieve like a data replication and a metadata replications. And we are leveraging those, um, those features and to achieve high throughput for ozone replication. And, uh, and the next slide, we'll talk about like the security mechanism, how we protect those uh, protocols. That's how we achieve the securities. Uh, can you turn to the next page? Yeah. So to protect those protocols and uh, for Hadoop RPC, uh, we typically have like a uh, Kerberos or a delegation token. Those are the well-known security mechanism on the uh, horizontal lines. And we already have those mechanism. And but for the gRPC, the vertical lines, the protocol between uh, Ozone Manager, uh, between SCM and between data nodes, and those uh, are TLS. And that's a standard mechanism for um, like the uh, for the gRPC uh, security. And on the authorization side, and we implement a pluggable model. So we support both native Ozone authorizer, which is similar to the POSIX semantics, and also the Ranger uh, plugin that is also included as part of the Ozone GA release. And on the encryption side, we have support for at rest data encryption and so that you can create an encrypted bucket and uh, where all the data at rest will be uh, in an encrypted format. And we also support over the where transport uh, encryption for hardware RPC and also for the gRPC TLS. Next. 
yeah so i have pretty much covered uh, like that in the previous discussion but you can see that the 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 horizontal lines and the, which is uh, <clears throat> the left line i i i draw a box uh, which is a Kerberos and a dedication token and the vertically you can see tls protect all those ha services and uh, for uh, inter um, like auto manager communication inter um, uh, Intro SEM communication and intro data node communication. Next. So for the delegation tokens and uh, uh, the way it works is basically the client talk to auto manager uh, with uh, Kerberos and uh, and uh, with Kerberos identity established, then the uh, the client can ask auto manager to give a delegation token back, and then the delegation token can be persist and. Uh, and uh, reloaded into some of the tasks uh, at execution time for like Yarn, MapReduce, and Spark to consume the uh, Ozone services with this delegation token without uh, requirements of having a key tab associated with these tasks. And the block token is another mechanism to protect the uh, the, the IO path because the IO path, the data node does not have any information about like the token. So the way it works is like either uh, you have um, the 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 key that sign the token available for the for the data node, or you have some other mechanism to verify the signature of the tokens. And so 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 the way we implement this uh, is uh, slightly different from HDFS. So uh, can you turn to the next page? Hey, Brad, can you turn to the next page? Uh, I think the window is slightly yeah, it's good. So um, so in HDFS and the, all the name name services and the and the the day node uh, they share the same uh, signing keys and uh, so there is a requirement uh, periodically day node has to pick up the name node signing keys so that uh, the the day node can verify the uh, block token signed by the name node and uh, this is not a very scalable solutions consider the larger clusters where you have to periodically sync the keys over the wire and you have to secure the channels uh, when you send those keys and that brings a lot of challenges and all days i think they uh, require the, the day node running as root uh, so that uh, the, the day node prove its identity before name node can safely handling the signing keys to data node and uh, later, later on, the Sasso was introduced, but Sasso has uh, some other issues uh, as well. So in Ozone, we, we do not take that approach. Instead, we leverage the PKI and based uh, like key signings so that uh, there is no need for the Adeno to sync the, uh, the shared keys anymore. And uh, we are relying on the, uh, the public key of the, of the Ozone manager, uh, which uh, signing the block tokens. And, uh, the the key uh, the token was signed with the uh, auto manager's private key and uh, the they know does not need the private key they only need the public key of the of the auto manager to uh, check the signatures and uh, the way it works is it both trust a uh, reliable ca and which is scm uh, manager which we implement uh, in-house ca to support this uh, kind of uh, uh, trust uh, between the auto manager and the data nodes next slide please yeah, so I already mentioned this. Uh, so the SCM play a very important role in the overall ozone security is because it is acting as SCMCA. All the services, including data nodes and the uh, ozone manager must have uh, a, a certificate sign request signing to the SCM before it can bootstrap itself running uh, in the full like a service mode. And uh, so that uh, once the CSR was uh, uh, certificate sign request was uh, approved by the SCM and then this, uh, uh, this service is getting assigned a, a certificate and, uh, and uh, assigned a certificate uh, signed by the SCM, uh, uh, SCM uh, root, uh, root keys so that uh, when they are signing other additional tokens and uh, all the uh, other services can verify those tokens with, uh, uh, based on the certificate signed by the CA. And so this is a chain of trust exact between all the services across the system. Well, the SMC play a key role in the in this uh, whole overall uh, security architecture. 
And uh, this is talking about some of the details of the token format. And uh, there's nothing specific compared with uh, uh, Hadoop delegation token. The only thing uh, paid attention is the certificate serial ID. And that tells um, what is the auto manager uh, certificate ID that is used to sign this token. And later on, if uh, like uh, other auto manager instance need to verify the token and they can uh, figure out which certificate, which public key used to validate this token. Yeah, next please. And the block token, uh, we already talked about it. It's like uh, similar to the auto manager. The difference is that they know uh, is where the validation happens and uh, they know may not have the auto manager's certificate and but it can request it from the CA where the secure protocol to get the certificate and finish the validations. Next. Yeah, this is about the block token. The block token has some special access mode. So we will be able to enforce some of the uh, authorizations so that like uh, uh, some of the token can only allow to read and others allows to write. And uh, and uh, similarly, it has the auto manager certificate zero ID so that they know they can figure out which uh, public key used to validate the block token. Yeah, so this page already uh, covered, so we can move forward to the next. Yeah, I'm now handing over to Brad. Thanks. Thank you, Shaoyu, for explaining the high level architecture and the HA security, ozone security aspects. Uh, from here, I'll continue with the S3 security. Before diving into ozone S3 security mechanism, let's try to understand how AWS S3 security works. Like if the user wants to get the access key and secret, like there will be a root user who logins to AWS console and go to the security credentials and he will generate the access key and secret to talk to S3. Or like root user can create IAM users and he can provide the permissions to them to get, generate their own access key and secret. Now coming to ozone S3, we know we have for the authentication, we have used the Kerberos mechanism. So when the user wants to get an access key and secret, user will try to connect to Ozone Manager and he will be authenticated by a Kerberos mechanism. For this user, what Ozone Manager does is he will, the, for that user, he, uh, it will create an access key and access secret. Internally in Ozone, each user is mapped to access key and secret. Now let's see how S3 credential generation happens. Whenever user wants to get an access key and secret to talk to Ozone S3 APIs, he need to issue a command called Ozone S3 get secret. When this command is run, like the client will be authenticated via Kerberos. If authentication is successful, it allows the generation of S3 credentials. How the credentials are generated is access key is nothing but the Kerberos user ID. Secret is nothing but a short 256 digest of 32 random 32 character. And these S3 secret is finally stored in the S3 secret table in Ozone Manager. All the metadata in Ozone Manager is stored in RocksDB. Like RocksDB has multiple column families to store different kind of entities. For storing the S3 secret, we have so this information is stored in the S3 secret table. Now let's try to understand how S3 secret credentials are used for authentication. Whenever a client issues the request to S3 gateway, a S3 gateway server parses the S3 authentication header and creates the S3 token. S3 token comprises of access key, signature, and the string to sign. These information is extracted from the S3 authentication header. And this token is submitted to the Ozone Manager by a Hadoop RPC. Now let's try to understand how the validation of S3 token happens. Whenever Ozone Manager has received a token, which is kind of S3 token, it from that, it extracts the access key ID. For that access key, what is the secret? It gets from the S3 it gets from the S3 secret manager. Using the secret string to sign, it, it compute the signature. The, the signature is if the signature is matched with the token signature, then it provides the access to the Ozone manager. If the signature doesn't match, then it is an invalid token and we, de we deny the request to the user. Now let's try to understand how HA is implemented in, for the critical services like Ozone manager and the storage container manager. To implement high availability in Ozone, we have used Apache Ratis, which is an implementation of Raft consensus, Raft consensus protocol. Apache Ratis is an open source project and Raft consensus protocol is used whenever we want to replicate, whenever we want to have a replicated state machine or whenever we want to replicate logs or whenever we want to have a high available system, we use Apache Rat, uh, Raft consensus protocol. For this Raft consensus protocol, we need at least three nodes 
to to achieve high availability in these three nodes one of the node will be chosen as leader and the other two will act as followers client will be connecting to the leader and submitting the read or write requests the state mission state mutations are replicated by the ratis server and the consistency is guaranteed by applying the ratis log in the same order across the all the machines now let's try to understand scm hs security uh, as we have seen when we have a single scm we start the root ca server that has been issuing the certificates to the ozone manager and the data nodes now with the high availability system there will be three scms so if you have a single root ca that will be a bottleneck if that node goes down so we cannot bring up any new nodes in the cluster so for this what we have done is we have introduced a root ca and sub ca so root ca will be issuing the certificates to itself and the other scms in the cluster and the intermediate ca will be issuing the certificates to the ozone managers and data nodes in the cluster in this in the high availability system one of the scm will be chosen as a primordial scm which start the root ca server as i said root ca issues the certificates to itself and the other scms in the cluster and sub ca issues the certificates to data node and ozone managers in the cluster both leader and follower scm runs the sub ca to issue the certificates in the ha only the leader will as i said only the leader will be accepting the request so the leader sub ca will be issuing the certificates to the data node and ozone managers now let's try to understand the ozone ha security attack here we have three scms one of the scm will be chosen as a primordial scm which starts the root ca and that sorry the root ca will be issuing the certificates to the bootstrap scms like it will so the bootstrap scm will make a csr request and it, they will get a signed certificate from the primordial scm and now let's say a, a primordial bootstrap scm became the leader so this bootstrap scm will be issuing the certificates to the ozone managers and data nodes in the cluster using its sub ca server now let's try to understand the omha security aspects OM also achieved high availability using Apache Redis. Each OM during in its initialization during startup generates a public private key pair. O Ozone manager then makes a certificate signing request to SCM to get a signed certificate. This happens with a in a secure channel like with Hadoop RPC, we protect them using the Kerberos authentication. OM uses private key to sign the tokens and client uses OM certificate to validate the token. So client here means like, let's say Ozone manager has given a token, delegation token. The same Ozone manager uses its public certificate to validate the tokens. In the in, in case of data node, like in case of block tokens, client will be the data node. Data node will be contacting OM to get the certificate and validate the tokens before allowing the access to read, write to the data nodes. Now let's try to understand how the token validation happens in HA. Like, as we have seen, as we have seen, like uh, token information has a certificate serial ID to say which ozone manager has signed this token. So, if the set, when the ozone manager receives the token, it checks the certificate serial ID. If it's if the certificate serial ID matches with its local certificate, it uses that certificate and validate the token. If in case of let's say we have three OMs and OM one has is the leader and it has issued the tokens to the clients and now OM two became the leader. When the token has come, it will see the certificate serial ID. It doesn't match with its local certificate. So it will make a call to SCM to get the certificate and use that certificate to validate the token. So general verification of token validation happens like this. Verif verifies the token exists in OM to check if it is a valid token and validate the password using the certificate and finally verifies the token validity. Now let's try to see inter OM, inter SCM, inter DN, like as Shavi said, like we use the mutual TLS. As we know, all the components in the ozone cluster get, get a signed certificate from the SCM. So this inter SCM, OM, and DN communication channel is secured with MTLS. So that's uh, the certificate is used to set up MTLS among OM, SCM, and DN instance. Each OM, SCM, DN uses its private key, certificate, and the list of CS, like root CA and sub CA certificates, as a trust store during the MTLS setup. How client to data node authentication happens? External client doesn't have a certificate issued from SCM. So client to data node communication is only TLS, not mutual TLS. So client gets a CA list as a trust store from Ozone Manager during its initialization. Now let's try to see different endpoints. What is the transport mechanism used and what is the authentication? Client to OM, we know we have used Hadoop RPC and the authentication mechanism is Kerberos or delegation token. 
between ozone manager scm it is hadoop rpc and the authentication mechanism is kerberos between scms oms and dns we use grpc because there we have used the ratis and the authentication mechanism is mutual tls and client to data node we use grpc and the authentication mechanism is block tokens or tls uh, now let's finally see the demo in this demo i'll be showing a ha secure cluster which is installed by cloudera manager and i will be showing the certificates on the cluster to show the signed certificates are issued by the scm and finally see a s3 ozone demo so this is a cm managed cluster it has three ozone managers and three storage container managers as you can see and let's see the configuration Uh, in HA, we, as I said, we need to choose one of the SCM as a primordial SCM. So I have choose one of them as a primordial SCM. And this is a secure enable cluster. Now let's see the certificates. The, this is a SCM uh, data node, SCM node, which has CA and SIPCA. It has a public private key pair and the certificates. Certificate.cat is the certificate and the CA one is the root CA certificate. And the number with certificate is the certificate serial ID. The number denotes the certificate serial ID. Now let's try to see the certificate structure and see the issuer and the subject fields. As we can see here, the issuer is the root CA, SCM at the rate host, and the sub CA will be having SCM hyphen sub at the rate host. Now let's try to see the CA certificate, root CA certificate. The, the root CA is generally started with the self-signed certificate. So issuer and the subject will be having the same nodes. Now let's see for OM, the same structure, the certificate and the CA which has signed the certificate and the root CA certificate and the public and private key pairs. As I said, for o, uh, OM, the certificate will be issued by the sub CA. It is SCM hyphen sub at the rate host, and the CM will be OM at the rate host. Let's see for the data nodes. The same structure root CA, the CA which has signed, and the signed certificate for the data node and public private key. For DNs, also the sign issuer will be the sub CA. You can see SCM hyphen sub at the rate host, and the subject will be DN at the rate host name. I'm doing a K in it uh, to continue with the S3 demo to get the S3 secret. I'm getting a S3 secret, like uh, which will give me access key and secret for this user. As I said, access key is nothing but the Kerberos user. So I'm using AWS CLI for the demo here. So I'm configuring access key and secret here. I'm just trying to create an alias command instead of typing every time. So let me let us try to create a bucket. Now let's try to put some object into this bucket. Uh, let's list the object which we have just written into the ozone cluster. We can see the object which we have created, the key one. Finally, fetch that object, get that object, treat that object. Uh, let's see the content of this. I have, I have just shown the basic APIs, but we have supported multi part, multi -part, multi delete APIs. Like uh, you can read the OZO documentation for that. Thank you. Any questions?